Now we're set up to make a measurement of the, um, the lung volume. So over to the right, we have a, um, a lung that's inflated sitting in the fixative. Um, and we're going to measure its volume, and we'll actually do it twice to check on the repeatability. So the beaker filled with water is sitting on the scale with the device that's going to press the lung underwater in its position. So the first thing we're going to do is tear the beaker. So we hit the tear button on the scale um, to bring that to zero. Okay, and now we're going to take the lung out of the, out of the, um, the, the beaker. We're going to dry it off so we don't measure any excess volume. We'll dry it off on the um, paper towel. That's So roll it a few times on the paper towel. And then we're going to drop it into the beaker with the, the tear on it. And we're going to make the measurement. And we get a measurement of 607, 606 um, milligrams, which is 606 microliters for this particular lung. All right, now we're just going to repeat that again. So we're going to take the lung out, we're going to dry it off again, we're going to put the device back in and we have to tear the, the scale again because we've lost some water. And we're going to dry the lung off again and we're going to measure its lung volume. And we get a value of 600 and, uh, 601 uh, micro, uh, milligrams or microliters. And so that's um, a little bit less. Um, perhaps we didn't dry it off equally, but it's pretty close within an experimental error. Um, and, and that's all you need to do. That's how you do it. Um, the, long, the, the measurements are very reproducible, um, and they're easy to do. I should note that this is actually a left lung only, um, so that's why the volume of about 600 microliters is, is, um, would be from a a fairly large lung. The left lung is about 40% of the total.